Hi, welcome to another episode of Filmmaking with Fraser. Um, we're all locked in with the coronavirus, although it's not quite got to that stage yet, but more or less, um, more and more people are self-isolating and doing some social distancing and basically just trying to not catch this thing, even though I was going to say, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. I was going to say the stats and that was me nudging the desk, by the way, that wasn't an earthquake. Um, I was going to go into the stats and everything else, but you guys are, are on top of it. Or I don't want to cause any mass hysteria. I don't want to make it any worse than it already is. It's bad. Very smart people are looking into it. They're working on a vaccine. It'll be fine. So, <laughs> since I am self-isolating, I'm making some videos up for both my Get Your Geek On vlog and my Filmmaking Fraser vlog because there's no TV work to speak of that I can find. Uh, there was a nice little uh, window there between January and now of lots of jobs being advertised and me and a few friends of mine who also work in TV were applying that mad for them and getting nowhere and all of a sudden the coronavirus hit and now productions are quite lightly uh, postponing, shutting down, making sure that this thing doesn't spread any faster than it has to. So here we are, I, I am stuck, uh, I'm stuck in the flat for now. So I will continue doing some filmmaking with Fraser vlogs. Um, I'll continue the blogs with where I'm up to, what I'm doing. The big project at the minute is Dream Girl, which is our brand new short film. Um, my first short film in seven years because I've been either working at the BBC or doing indie work, uh, indie production work, sorry, uh, or doing Cops Monsters, which we found out recently is now in 60 countries on Amazon Prime. But Amazon Prime pays you 0.0.6 .0 pence per hour streamed. So it's not like Amazon didn't say, hey, we love your show, have all of the money. That was me doing the money thing. Um, I'm not cool, I'm not a street. Um, I'm a nerd. I think my t-shirt shows you that. Yep. I'm wearing my uh, Holtzman from Ghostbusters t-shirt. So there you go. Not cool. Uh, well, cool, but not that not cool. Um, so basically Amazon don't give a big wad of cash. They, they basically set the rules, so if people watch it, then we get money. But then our distributor, my productions, take 65% of what Amazon gives them, and then we get 35%. And then I think we get that every, I think it's, I think it's every quarter of the year, I think. So maybe none of that everyone's forced to stay in. Maybe more people will watch Cops and Monsters. Um, we're waiting to find out if we're going to get added to Google Play, which is another great platform, so that'd be awesome, that might increase the revenue um, and we are waiting to hear from iTunes as well but I'm leaving that with the distributor they know what they're doing so I will do a wee chat about that at some point it'll be video I may as well I have time but now I'm going back to the beginning so welcome to a another episode of Filmmaking with Fraser and this episode is about night is day We're focusing on Night is Day. So Night is Day originally was a script that I wrote called Birthright and the idea behind it was this guy whose kid was a, uh, no, it was a big guy, a superhero um, in the non-traditional sense. His mother was psychic so he had the power of being psychic and then some gangsters came along, kidnapped his mother and forced him to use his psychic powers to do evil things for them. And then he flips it in his head and saves the day. It was an idea that came to me when I was at the BBC training programme E-Force way back in 2003 at Queen Margaret Drive in Glasgow. Um, I think I saw a competition for a script online or something and it needed an idea. And I'm a Spider-Man loving kid, a Buffy loving kid and an Angel loving kid. And I just decided to put it all together and try and do a own Scottish superhero thing. Uh, with the guys who were on the course with me, we shot a kind of teaser thing, which is nowhere to be seen. Um, doesn't exist. And then when I went to college, went to James Cook College to do the HND Television Operations and Productions there in 2004, 2003, 2004. It was after E-Force. Um, the first thing we did when we came out of there was we made 
uh, Night is Day uh, Dusk and I will put the trailer for Night is Day Dusk in here. Life is made up of lots of complications. They always fall into two simple choices. As simple as night and day. All we have to do is choose one. Or so we're led to believe. You need to leave now. There isn't time to explain. I don't want to be screwed twice in one day. Consider it a done deal. You know I won't always be there to open that door for you. Welcome to my night. Um... And then it just didn't die. Um, <laughs> still doesn't die. I still toy away with it in my head. Um, so Night is Day from Birthright turned into Jason McKenzie, who uh, you don't really find out much about him in the in the short film Dusk, which I ironically don't have a copy of. There's no copy of it anywhere for me to find. I've only got the trailer. Um, people who worked on Night is Day Dusk have copies, but I don't. And so basically it was about Jason McKenzie, who was a superhero gifted with special abilities so when if he touches you, if you are about to be in mortal danger or die, same thing, he will get a mind-numbing vision of that and then using his powers he will jump in and save the day. That was that was the basic premise of it. Um, we did it as a short film first and then I wanted to do it as a, a web series. How that happened was two things. First of all, <laughs> we were making a trailer for a film that I'd written called uh, the journey because I was obsessed with Highlander, Kill Bill and I wanted to write an epic Scottish sword fighting film um, and I wonder if I got a copy of the script anywhere on my computer now and we were filming a trailer for it at Victoria Park and we finished filming and we were walking across the road and then it was the green man boop, 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 green light uh, I walked across the road with me and two of the production assistants and a car came out of nowhere and knocked us down. So I broke my leg, smashed my face and broke my left shoulder. <laughs> so that took me out of the game just as I started my own business. Um, and that was that was the beginning of my financial uh, predicament. So I survived that, I recovered and I relearned how to walk. And that was all fine, that was all good. Um, so I survived that and then I just went back to the whole, right, I need to make something, I want to make something, I want to make something, what have I got, what have I got. And Night is Day was still swirling in my head. So I decided to do it as a web series. Um, I put up a post on one of the old film groups that I can't remember the name of right now. It might have been UKFilms.com or something because I was originally going to do a short film. And then I decided to scrap the short and do a feature, uh, a web series because I'm mental. <laughs> and... Um, we spent a year-ish with Night's Day. I wrote uh, six episodes all by myself, which, and I didn't have a script editor. These are all mistakes I made. I now have wonderful script editors and wonderful people who can look over these things for me, and I will try never to write a whole series all by myself ever again, because that was mental. Uh, at the time, it was fun. Uh, we found willing crew, we found willing cast, we had equipment, we had no money whatsoever. Um, and we just went and did it and we just made it, we made six episodes I remember meeting up with other filmmakers and crew and actors around Scotland and I remember saying to them I'm going to do a web series, it's going to be a superhero web series and I'm going to put out one a week I think I said I'm going to put it and basically every single one of them told me that no it wasn't going to happen, good luck uh, a few enemies were formed <laughs> during this time um, I asked the original actor Ross Maxwell from the Dusk short film to come back but he didn't want to do it and so we ended up casting Chris Somerville who is now goes by Chris Summers um, and oh, I love Chris, I love working with Chris um, we, we got on with him, he was perfect as Jason, he got the, the balance of emotion of like, like vigilante, like 
with the responsibility thrust on him that he didn't want, but but he did it because he knew he had to or knew he should. He got that really. He got that really well. Uh, we ended up <laughs> swapping actresses a few times around. Uh, when it came to season two, some people didn't come back, so we swapped them out. Um, but we were just we were doing our best as we could to make it work. And there's a there is a behind the scenes video that was made that was shot when we were doing it. Um, I also met my then best friend Mark Harvey on that, and he came in. I had it in my head that I was going to put Mark in every episode as a different character, um, because I just thought it would be funny, <laughs> and because um, uh, because Sam Raimi kept putting Bruce Campbell in all his films, and I kind of wanted to make Mark my Bruce Campbell to my Sam Raimi. How egotistical, I'm metal. I hope we like Sam Raimi. Um. But yeah, we made it. We got it all out there. We screened all six episodes at the uh, at the Grosvenor Cinema in the West End, and we ended up getting on uh, Janice Forsyth's radio show to talk about it. And eventually, we did a second series, and eventually, we did a film that wrapped it all up. So that so it spanned from two thousand five to two thousand eleven. So it took up a lot of my life. Um, just like Cops and Monsters has taken, like, from 2016 to now, well, it's been, we shot an episode for Series 2 in 2018 and we've not had the money to do it anywhere else since. But it still consumes my life quite a lot. So, anyway, that's a preamble. We'll see what stays in. I'm going to re-watch this first episode. I've not really watched it properly for a while. Uh, Barry, the instructor. Hello, Barry. Uh, this is like your kid instructor, except it's my own work. Because that's how egotistical I'm not really egotistical. I just think it would just it might be interesting for you guys to see to see kinda where I started um properly and kinda where I am now. <laughs> but there might not be much difference. But anyway. We'll watch it. I'll give an I'll give an honest reaction. Um and we'll see how we go. Blah blah blah. Let's watch the first episode. Uh, Steve Dunster, the wonderful Steve Dunster, who did music for quite a lot of my stuff, did the music for this. Uh, in the first episode, we used Steve's uh, score for the opening titles, but then a band got in touch with our producer, Kim Ferry. Hi, Kim. I don't know if you're going to watch this, because I think you're maybe in Germany. Uh, Kim, she got a band got in touch with her, I think. And we ended up using their theme tune and for episode two onwards, and it's just really, really cool. Uh, Steve's music is also really, really good, but we wanted a theme tune. That was what we wanted. We wanted a song because we just had that Buffy Angel thing in our house. Um, who, what else, what else, what else? All the characters are on there. Uh, this was the first episode. I don't think it had a name. <laughs> I don't think any of my episodes had a name. I think this is just episode one. Silly Be Film Production. A company name I might ditch at some point. Uh, that is a Glasgow set. That's Glasgow Queen Street, shot from the Buchanan Galleries. Here's she and Denovan as Amy. Um, and there's Chris. As Jason. Uh, that's Neil Meffin, uh, who was one of the producers for the first couple of episodes, uh, as the attacker. So if you haven't figured out, I edited this as well and I can't remember how I did it, but we did have uh, Andrew, uh, Kim's friend, doing the post-production on this. I'll find out. Oh, I caught it part one. Uh, that is a real tattoo from Chris. That is not real glass in his back. He was supposed to have got stabbed in the back with a bottle from the attacker. I don't know why I didn't show that. Maybe it was too hard to do. Oh. And I just suddenly remembered the stupid thing that they do. It fades in and out of the title of the people's names. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. Terrible, terrible. But the music's so pretty. Thank you, Steve. So yeah, this is uh, Jackie Clark's house. Jackie was our prop uh, by our side dresser on the first series. Alan McLean. Oh, Alan. I love Alan. Did we shoot this over one day? First episode? We might have shot the first episode over one or two days. And I remember so being in... So you do this for a living then? Oh, so Amy 
who's Shane's playing, is a reporter at college. That was important because it was supposed to be this whole Sorry. journalistic. Hey, who is Jason McKenzie? I'm just trying to understand you. I mean, how did you do that? Put your top back on. Started six months ago. I was drunk. My girlfriend left me. I stayed on across the road. I broke my leg in my arm. So that's taken the from the flashback of the short film, Dust, Night's Day Dusk. That is not Chris. That is Ross Maxwell, who played Jason in that, uh, in that, in that short film. You can't touch me. I'm laughing because I'm just remembering all the things we laughed. Because I think Chris stands up and the um, pillow goes on. When I got out of hospital, I was determined to change my fortune. Ian Thompson on camera for the first series. I thought... Ian fucking Thompson. I could just, see as him, cause he always gonna happen to me. <laughs> so we're at Jackie's house. This is a no guy and so is Jackie's house. We're, uh, we cast everyone online and stuff and people sent in self tapes and we did additions and we met people that was, uh, uh, it, we just did it, it was like where we met them and had a chat with them or the addition properly or whatever just to get a feel for people and uh, Alan just got the character of Ames perfectly. Uh, Jason here was basically had enough of always bad luck, his girlfriend leaving him, losing his job, Do you long enough to find me, Mr. McKenzie? breaking his legs. Breaking his leg. Not, Don't be so shocked. Not biographical at all. I'm a psychic. Um, and Jason finds Ames online. <laughs> Never meet a stranger online on your own. Who promises him that he'll help him. Is that aggression that is the problem? We'll soon sort that. <laughs> but I remember really going outside. I want to stop bad things from happening to me. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. Come, let us begin. <laughs> I remember going outside and, and Alan was rehearsing and he was wearing those pyjamas and I was like, oh god, I was mortified. But it works! Uh, this scene here, um, it, Chris's line was first, but he didn't know that his line was first and we were just sitting awkwardly standing, sitting, waiting for him to say something. Have faith, GC. Close your eyes and relax. It's quite dodgy. It, it could be misinterpreted. Now, for the time, I was very happy with these friends. Even now, I'm happy with them. I'll do it differently now. But we're not going to do it again, Fraser. Stop it. It is finished. So, this whole episode is basically how Jason became a superhero. Uh, that's Glasgow City Centre, Dumber the Rivers, back in Mogai. Here comes Claire McShane, who I still see from time to time. Love Claire. Something definitely felt different. And then it happened. Was it like a spidey sense? Whose story is this? Sorry. I regret that. I regret that voiceover. We don't need it. It's not needed. It's unnecessary. A good script editor would have taken that out. So the girl with the baseball bat I met because she worked at an internet cafe in Glasgow City Centre that I used to frequent in Princeton. Um, and Ian is obviously behind the camera there and I'm in front of Ian with my leg up near the lens so the baseball bat hit me and not the camera. I put myself in there. Here they come, the Neds. That's right, fear of the Neds last region. Here they come. Don't know why we suddenly panned to Mortal Glasgow when we could just cut to that. Taxi, see the taxi, taxi sale. Taxi is gone. Always annoys me. Rewind it, you'll see. Taxi's there, the taxi's gone. Welcome. 
The Ned Johnson tag team drove away. Hello. Uh, this is Lang Bank. This is my family, t uh, my family home. It's in the fields where I grew up. I didn't grow up in the fields. I grew up in the house behind the fields. What the hell did you do to me? I gave you what you That's wanted. That's right, boys and girls. We I found this at the same time as the previous one. Not how all people die. Would you rather the girl had died? Hey, how, how did you know? Remember, Jason, I am a psychic. Can you do this? You saved the world. You have mind numbing visions. Calm down, Jason. No, he doesn't get a vision when he touches them. Why did nothing happen when you touched me? You and I are special. We are special. I don't want this. You wanted you. What are you talking about? I don't think I ever explain it. I want to know the truth. Like, right now, touch you, Jason, you're special. You have always been special. Remember that. My fault, Jason. What am I supposed to do? Whatever feels right. Better the fuck you from Ames. He's like, I've given you this power and I'm not going to say it was the truth. I Goodbye. Need to know the truth. Not today. Come back when you know you're ready. And I think he goes back in episode four. It might be five. I'm going to say four. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Glasgow City Centre. <laughs> Across that bridge is the lovely little sandwich shop. I went to put still there. So this is your job then? Well, I did ask if it would let me see the future. You're a good man. Please tell me, what does it feel like? Does it hurt? What happens if you touch someone for a really long time? You can't tell anybody. It's our little secret. You did save my life after all. You can't touch me. Nobody can. Anymore. See, Chris got that balance. Brilliant. Like, heartbroken that his girlfriend left him and now he's got this responsibility and he can't be close to anybody. We can, but not physically close. Thank you, Amy. We're probably not close to full stop because of, you know, the danger that he brings. <sighs> so she finishes in a glass of water. Oh, Scottish, Scottish water. Um, grabs her laptop to start writing her expose, her latest piece at college. <laughs> People that out that the font was so big, but like it's great license and it works. You wouldn't have been able to see it otherwise. There you go. That is. I might have put a trailer. Who was a trailer? Why Oh god. I won't talk about them. You better bring that down. I don't need to talk about them. But there's Stephen McEwen and Tam Toy. And there's Mark. And there's Alexandra. Please, you can't believe me. Why, Stephen? Give it to me. We definitely found episode two of the two Because the locations are I just can't believe it. We've seen so many crazy things in this city. Is it so wrong to believe there is somebody else fighting our corner? That's near the BBC, that's a bit of Kevin's flat was just over that way. Or base. There you go. There's everyone. Ian Thompson. Craig Sledden, the director of photography, James Clark, the makeup. Jackie, Joe. Oh, Joe, I don't know, yeah. Didn't put a date on it. Didn't date it. I date things now. Don't remember how old they are. .com. I wonder if that still exists. So there you go. That, is, that was Nighty's Day episode one, part one. Um, weird watching that back now. Um, I might watch more of it. We might do one on one. On one. No, I'm not going to put you through that. I might just do it for more. Good. Uh, it was an amazing learning experience. We learned a lot on it. Um, I kind of wish we could go back to those days slightly. I know that sounds, oh, but when I was a lad better times just because we didn't have to worry about you know much we didn't have to worry about budgets and money and funding and whatever but we knew because of felicia day's uh web series and um, the guild and i'm sure she, she talks about it in great depth in her book um like what they what they went through to make their web series about like geeks playing 
D and D online and stuff, and that was a fairly simple concept compared to let's do a full on superhero web series in Glasgow with lots of special effects and fights. Uh, but that was the inspiration. That's what we wanted to do. We wanted to bring it to Scotland. We wanted to do something that wasn't River City and it wasn't a drew drama and it wasn't just murder, murder, murder. We just wanted to do something different and something that the, the the Doctor Who nerds could get on board. I mean, the whole reason we did Night's Day was because it was in between series one and two of Doctor Who when it came back and we were, I was waiting for Doctor to come back on and I was like, right, I'm going to write a web series. Um, and and here we are. That was that was that was why we did it. Um, but yeah, okay, cool. Thanks for watching. Uh, not much more to add to that right now. Um, yeah, we, I'm pretty sure we filmed that over one day, and I have distinct remember memories of us all getting ice cream <laughs> from an ice cream place from guy. I remember, I remember that distinctly, and I remember laughing a lot of Kim. Um, I'm gonna reach out to Kim. See how she's doing. Uh, I remember laughing a lot with Kim. I remember working on it with everybody. I remember the laughs that we had. As soon as Mark Carver came on board, it just became absolute chaos because he just kept cracking everyone up and everyone just kept laughing. Um, and then in episode two, we brought in Stephen and Colin and Tam Toy, who's a, still a good friend of mine. Tam uh, has made a feature film called Infiltrated. I will put a link to that on Amazon uh, below for you to check out. Tam also self-funded that, spent a lot of money on that. Um, and he took it everywhere and anywhere. And it's now on Amazon Prime, so I'd appreciate it if you could check out his work after. Um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, it was really good making that show. It was, it's what started me. It gave me the, like the, the guts to, to do it. So that was, that was good. Um, that's, that's not really much more to add. I'll keep talking. I might do some vlog. I might do some blogs about what we did and how we did it. Um, aye, there you go. That's it. That's episode one of uh, Nighty's Day, part one. Um, it's on. It's on my YouTube. I'll put a link in the description. There are six episodes in episode uh, series one, and I think there's seven in series two. Series two was way too ambitious, and it was just mental because. Series 1 was kind of like 10, 15 minute episodes. Uh, kind of the Curse of Cops and Monsters. Cops and Monsters started off with like 10, 15, 5, 10 minute episodes and then they became 20, 25 and the money, the budget just went... Um, and at the same with Night's Day, the, the, the episodes just got bigger and bigger, more ambitious and crazy. Uh, but it was nice to wrap it up in the feature film, so maybe I'll do, I'll, I'll do a wee bit about the feature film later. Because uh, that's a story. That is a story all by itself. So, yep, okay, that's it. I'm definitely going to stop talking. So thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, share it if you want. Um, I'm on Patreon. Link is in the description below. Three quid a month or up to 25 quid a month to get more exclusive videos and more chats and more vlogs and send me your scripts and I'll read them and send you my notes and let me know what, what, if, if my opinion means anything to you at all. Um, as I said, it will help me help me continue doing this. Uh, and that's it. And that's awesome. Right, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Thank you for watching Filmmaking with Fraser. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye-bye.